Hi guys, it's Barnaby for Spurred On. I'm back again. Last time I said I was back, it was because I've been away in LA for 10 days. And then I came straight back and I got my second bout of tonsillitis and I've been off for a week. And thank you for all your concern. People have been asking where I am. Thank you for the person who said uh, last time I did a video, he looks like he's aged 10 years. What have you been doing to him? That's because I was getting tonsillitis. Then I had it, I've been in bed for a week, but I'm back. And since I've gone, Spurs are in second place in the league. It's hard to know how to deal with it. This is uh, our Monday episode of Five Things We Learned. Of course, it's five things we learned from the game on Saturday at home that we won 1-0 against Watford. So, first up, it's about the fullbacks. Of course, Kieran Trippier scored the winner, his first Premier League goal for Spurs. His first goal for Spurs, in fact, uh, on Saturday against Watford. And it just made me want to talk about the full pack, full backs, all four of them, Kieran Trippier and Kyle Walker on the right, Ben Davis and Danny Rose on the left. And you tell me in the comment section below what you think, but I personally think we've got to a stage now when Maurizio Pochettino doesn't have a number one fullback on either side. We don't have reserve fullbacks and a first team fullback. It is all to do with who we're playing on the day in question. At the beginning of the season, it looked to me like it was going to be Danny Rose and Carl Walker for all the Premier League games, and then Ben Davis and Kieran Trippier for the Europa League and the Cup games, but now it's totally changed. I think Pochettino has totally realised how important Kieran Trippier's crossing can be and positioning in terms of the attacking side on the, uh, and the attacking on the right hand side. And that really uh, came to show with the winner on Friday, uh, on Saturday. Basically, Kieran Trippier was playing attacking midfield right the whole time. He was just there for the entirety of the game, cross after cross after cross. And yeah, of course, they're not all going to hit the target. They're not all going to get to Kane's head uh, or whoever. But it's putting pressure on the defence all the time, putting pressure on Gomez, who had a great game on Saturday, and the Watford defence. And on the other side, Ben Davis, his little triangles, his one-twos, Along the left-hand side, he had a couple of shots himself, probably should have scored. I thought it was really good uh, tactical stuff from Pochettino, picking Davis and Trippier on, uh, on the weekend. And I don't think you should be surprised if you see Walker and Rose come back in for the City game. I think he'll be worried about how City deal with us when they're hitting us on the break, and he'll want a little bit more pace there to recover. So I think it might be Walker and uh, Rose against City next weekend. But... If that happens, I think we'll miss Trippier's crossing prowess. And I think Kane does get a lot more chances when Trippier's on the pitch. So why don't you guys let me know in the comments section below which, which, uh, you know, which fullbacks do you think are best? Or does it, like I said, does it just totally depend on the game in hand that they're playing? Uh, second point today in the five things we learned from the Watford game, it's Kevin Vimmer. I have to talk about Kev. We're worried. In fact, I think I said it a couple of games ago. A lot will depend on how Kevin Vimmer comes in and takes over from Super Yan now that Yan is injured. He stepped in two clean sheets. Now, I'm not going to say it's just Kevin Vimmer, but I want to give big props to him. He's played really well, looks totally sound, good on the ball, as he has done in the Europa League all season. Obviously, built like a brick shit house, fantastic player. Um, but he's just stepped in as if it's never gone away. But it's not just down to him, I have to say. I think it's down to all the virals, leadership and Maybe even more importantly, because it's a, a, a role that he's not always been used to, Eric Dyer, I have to say, I think is the key to our defensive solidity. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I think it is easier for someone like Vimmer to come in and just step into Jan's shoes because Dyer is in front of him and Toby Alderweireld is teaching him, he's leading him, he's giving him the communication, he's sweeping up behind him when he doesn't win a header. All those things that make it easy, and you'll have seen from some of the social media quotes, uh, Toby Alderweireld has said that he, think Kev he thinks Kevin Vimmer is a fantastic young defender. And, uh, and Kevin Vimmer himself has said that it's relatively easy to step into Jan's shoes when he's got such help around him from the likes of Dyer and Alderweireld. So, two clean sheets so far for Vimmer. Let's have a third again coming up against Man City in the big one on Sunday. Going to be a huge game. Obviously, marking Aguero is a completely different state of affairs. The best striker in the world, quite possibly. If you're looking in terms of out-and-out out danger men, number nines, people who can do anything on the ball or make runs in behind. Vimmer's going to have a tough day at the office. But do I think him and Alderweireld can keep Aguero out and the rest of City out? Yes, I do. It's going to be a tough game. But come on, Big Kev, make it three clean sheets out of three. My third point in the five things that I think we learned from the Watford game, the crowd at White Hart Lane being the 12th man. Now, I've said this before. I, I've been controversial before. And I've said sometimes... In games where we're almost expectant of a victory against a team who's not doing as well as us at home, sometimes the crowd can be a little bit quiet, a little bit expectant, and the pressure kind of breeds onto the players. You can feel it. You can almost sense it. 
Uh, that certainly happened, I felt, earlier in the season. Um, in the Stoke game, for instance, uh, it was a bit different. Obviously, we went 2-0 up in that one. Certainly in the Leicester game at home where, you know, we ended up losing 1-0. But I think there was a, a kind of expectation there that we should turn them over and we didn't. But I have to say, against Watford at the weekend, the crowd were absolutely amazing. And a lot of the players have come out on social media and said it and agreed and said they, they were with us even when it was still 0-0 and their keeper was making a lot of saves. The crowd were there and they just knew that it was coming and they knew that they could help by being the 12th man, by supporting, by singing, by ratcheting up the atmosphere that it would happen. And when we did score, the whole place was completely bouncing and it just never really seemed like we were going to concede after that. And I think everyone went away from White Hart Lane just so happy that we'd taken that chance to go into second place and the crowd working as the 12th man, they had a lot to do with that, I think. I really feel like the players are buzzing off the fans and the fans are buzzing off the players at the moment. It's a real team effort. You know, it's the most team-like Spurs team. You know, I know that sounds weird, but not, not about individuals. It's about the way we're playing as a team. And I think the crowd are really responding to that at the moment. Everybody is loving what's happening at Spurs, second in the league. And the crowd at White Hart Lane can carry that on. It's a huge thing. The home games are hugely important. Got to make sure it's a fortress. Let's not win, uh, lose another game there this season. Let's keep supporting. The next uh, home game is the Palace home in the cup game, uh, cup game at home, and then Swansea at home in the league. Let's get those wins in those games. Let's keep it going. But obviously, we've got the City game before that. The fourth point in the uh, five things that we learned from the Watford game for me are that Deli Ali and Hung Min Son are vital, vital facets of this team at the moment. Now, they didn't start the game against Watford, and I have to say, I was a little worried about it at the beginning of the game when I, when I saw Pochettino's team. I thought, it, it, it leaves us a little bit one-paced, with Lamella out on one side and Chadley on the other and Ericsson in the middle. Uh, I would always pick Ericsson, I think he's the vital cog, but I think when we have Son and when we have Ali alongside Ericsson in that three behind Kane, it gives us the pace to get in behind and to get into the little pockets where Son likes to pick up the ball. And I felt maybe one, while they weren't on the pitch, we were a little one-paced. However, when they came on, I mean, obviously it was only about 150 seconds or something between Ali coming on and us scoring, but let's face it, he got in behind and he got that cross ac uh, across the front of the box. And that wasn't happening so much. Uh, you know, we were, we were getting crosses coming back, cut back and the keeper kind of parrying them out and stuff, but the key is getting them in behind. And I think Ali and Son and that pace they bring gives us something different. And I certainly would like to see them start. I mean, obviously, I think Deli Ali will start as long as his dizzy spells aren't causing him any trouble. But uh, I would like to see Ali and Son start to really hit Man City uh, on the, uh, uh, the counter-attack with their pace in the game on Sunday, uh, alongside Ericsson behind Kane. That is who I would start with. Now, I know there's a big kind of groundswell of support for Lamella, and Lamella has had a much better season, and I do like Lamella. But I personally think sometimes that little bit of pace to scare the opposition, especially Man City, who haven't been defending well, uh, is where we should go. But let me know what you think, because, you know, uh, it, it's interesting. People have different tactical opinions, and I think it is important that we discuss them all. Let us know what you think. Uh, my final point today in the five things that I feel like we learned from the Watford game is about Christian Eriksen. I mentioned it just there. I think he's the vital cog in the wheel. People were saying earlier in the season, because he hadn't scored so many goals or made as many assists as last season, they thought he was off it. I personally disagree. I don't think it's as simple as how many goals has he scored, how many assists he made. I mean, he still made absolutely loads of assists, but he hasn't got near the 10 goals that he scored in the Premier League last season yet. He may end up doing that. But in terms of linking up the play, bringing other people in, setting up chances for Harry Kane and Deli Alley and those around him, Ericsson again has been fantastic this season. He's our best technical player, I'm sure of it. Uh, he is just a fantastic addition to the team. I'm surprised we haven't got him signed up on a new contract yet. I think that's because he has some kind of bigger plan. I don't think necessarily he'll leave the club because I think the club are probably surprising him in terms of how well we're doing. But I think Levy should be working on that, working on that contract, because he is our most important player, and he will only get better. I think he's only 23 at the moment. In terms of how much responsibility he has on the pitch, uh, how important he is to us as a team and a club, let's get him signed up for another five years, and let's make him you know, the best play, paid player at the club, or the equal best paid player at the club, because he really is an absolute gift to a, a Spurs fan to have as a Spurs player. Fantastic player. Anyway, guys, that's been my five things that I felt I learnt or we learnt from the Watford game. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. What did I miss out? What do you agree on? What do you not agree on? Uh, let us know in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at TV. Come on, you Spurs. 
All right, guys, it's Josh Thackeray here reporting for Spurred on TV. We've just beat Watford 1-0 at the lane. We, the score does not justify the performance. I mean, listening to the fan cams there, 